Hey friends, it's Tracy and Violet from um, Tea Time with Tracy and Violet. I just heard a noise, that's all. Yeah. Anyways, I just got home. I wanted to attempt another reading vlog. Today, I, well, let me just think. I got up early, went for a walk, fed Violet, got the kids up for school, got them out on the bus, took my neighbor's car to town to pick up her groceries, she asked me to, uh, came back, did a little grocery haul on my other channel, and it is 10.45 in the morning. I want to start a new book, Hex. I've heard a lot of things about this, and I haven't flipped a page yet. But basically my understanding is this community has a witch in it who was killed 300 years ago and she haunts this community and um, she has her eyes and lips sewed shut and she people see her all the time. But anybody that lives in this community can't leave this community. If you live there, you cannot leave. If you leave, I guess you go crazy and kill yourself. And I guess it's quite a creepy story, and I'm very excited to start this today. Oh, I was just um, I was just about to do a little book haul, but I'm like, oh, I should just do that as a separate video, which I did. So, anyways, yeah, I want to start Hex. Um, I'm not going to start it right this second, but, well, I might read a few pages. But I got laundry to rotate and meat to defrost and prepare for when the children get home. Um... I'm going to make broccoli and cheese, hamburgers, I have buns, and I was just digging stuff through my freezer, like to use up. I have a bag of tater tots, because I made freezer meals the other day, and I bought an extra bag of tater tots, just in case I needed them. So I might do those up, and I have a random pizza in the deep freezer too. Like just a delicio pizza, I might throw that in. So it's going to be a smorgasbord of a supper, which isn't hard stuff to do at all. But I do need to wait for that hamburger to defrost. So anyways, yeah, I might read a few pages and then uh, move forward. 11.57. Yeah. I'll wait till 11.30 and then I'll get up and start hustling a bit. Violet has just taken a nap because we had a busy day, busy morning already. And, yeah. I'll see. My goal today is to at least to get to page 100. We'll see. It's Friday after all. But I like to give a book at least to 100 pages to know whether it's starting to get me or not. I don't know if this is a slow burn or not. I just got done reading Kin, which was fantastic. And um, that was really, that had me hooked right from the get. So... Hopefully this does too. Anyways, I'll check back in a bit. <sighs> All right, I've read a little bit longer. Um, it's like 11.40. And I got to page 35. I'm on chapter 3. So the book starts off... Oh, just a minute. Yeah, the book starts off just with um, like a family sitting around having Chinese food at their house. And this witch I was talking about... It's there in their house. I guess she can just go anywhere in this little town. She doesn't, she can't talk because her mouth is sewed shut and her eyes are sewed shut and she just stands there. That's all she's been doing. I'm going to edit a couple of videos, but I'm going to shut their door so while it doesn't go in there. Anyways, um, then it switches, like they're just introducing characters so far. Then it switched to like a real estate. People in charge of the town tried to discourage people from buying properties in the town because if you move there, you can't leave there. So they're doomed to kind of thing by this curse. So that's kind of where it's at right now. Violet, stay here. Um, there's this couple from New York that want to go to this town they see they fell in love with the house and the people are trying to like the people that are in charge of that violet don't like my elbow are offering them to they'll pay five thousand dollars on their next house but this house don't buy this house kind of thing but they're not divulging that there's a curse kind of thing 
And these people are like, no, no, we, we want this. We want this house. Violet. What? Anyways, yeah, it's still at the beginning. It hasn't really gotten to anything gritty or anything. I don't know if it does. But it's weird. She was just standing there and they have security cameras all over this little town so and they have an app to violet they have an app to keep a tab on where she is because she can show up at anybody's house be on any street and she just stands there and when she was in the house of this family at the beginning they just threw a dishcloth over her face <laughs> and she just stood there with a dishcloth over her face so yeah yeah, that's what's going on. But it's entertaining. There's nothing gruesome about it right now. And yeah, it's it's piqued my interest because I'm just like, I couldn't imagine living in a little town. And she doesn't seem like a scary witch. She doesn't look, she's not a pretty witch or anything. She looks all haggard and thin and wrinkled and dirty and stuff. But um, she just stands. That's what she does. So... I'm going to edit a couple of videos, um, and then I'm going to start doing other stuff around the house. So I'll pick up and read a little bit more after, and we'll see where, where it goes. That's not the bus, Violet. All right, it's around 125, 126. Um, while I was upstairs on the computer, I edited two videos. One's uploading, one's exporting. And, yeah, I haven't really done a whole whole lot more. I came downstairs, I read another on page 53. Another few pages, but I'm going to get up and start doing some mommy stuff. I don't feel like doing anything except sitting here, laying here. But Violet's there, my book is there. And I'm just cuddled in a blanket. But... Anyways, my husband's coming home tonight, which is exciting. For those that don't watch me on the other, my other channel, he's gone away for this month. So he's he came home last weekend and the weekend before, but he's just coming home for one sleep. Like he'll be heading back tomorrow, but it'll be nice, nice to have him home. And yeah, I might make myself coffee. I'm sleepy now. I'm sleepy. I do have a carbonated water that I haven't opened. That's what I was going to have. 50% off. But anyways, I should go, I should go do something, Violet. Yes, I'll be back.
get going, Violet. Whew. All right, guys, I had a quick shower. My husband's home. I'm about to eat. I'm having a hamburger patty cut up with some sugar-free ketchup, mustard, and a whole whack of broccoli and cheese. And oh, where's my salad? Oh, right in front of my friggin' face. A salad my husband brought home. And I have a 50% off carbonated water. I'm editing today's vlog, like over on Nova Scotia Living. So I'm going to eat this, do that, and I'll feel better. I'll feel more like a real person because <laughs> I'm just that kind of hungry. All right, guys. I ate all my sup. I'm full. I'm tired. But my husband's home and I want to go visit with him. So I'm going to cuddle on the couch under a blanket and stick my feet on my husband's lap because he's a furnace. I'm going to bring my book down. I don't know how much reading we'll get done tonight because um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine Season 8 just came out. So, you know. Um, but I'm still on page 67. My goal will be to get to page 100. We'll see. But if not, I will tackle it full force tomorrow. Hopefully. Because it will be Saturday. I won't have to get up and get the kids out the door and all that kind of stuff. So I'll check back in a bit if I make any progress. Well, hey friends, it's the next morning. Well, the next, it's lunchtime. That's what it is. And, um, yeah, we went apple picking this morning just at our neighbor's yard. It's just behind our house, Flora and Larry. So thank you so much, guys. And, um, yeah, there was a giant, giant hornet's nest or something. Like, humongous. I don't think I've ever seen one so big down hanging from one of the apple trees. It's like bigger than two basketballs. It's huge. So we didn't pick apples off of that tree. But anyways, my husband just took um, the kids into town because he's doing some errands. And he is going to get them something to like for lunch. So I don't have to make lunch today. So hip hip hooray about that one. High five, huh? Um, I just took Violet out just to do some business. You got some seeds in your hair, for goodness sakes. But I'm going to pick up where I left off last night with this. I didn't get any more reading done. Well... I got um, on page 73. I meant to get to page 100, but I just got, we watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We just kind of hung out and stuff like that. So I'm going to read for a little bit and uh, I'll try to get to page 100. So yeah, my dad's coming out for a visit. So he, he'll be here, you know, a little later than usual, just because I called him to tell him that the kids have gone to town and yeah, so I'll be back in a little while. All right, friends, I'm on page 103 on chapter 9, so I got a little bit done. It's almost 1 o'clock. I rotated some laundry. I had the last of that broccoli and cheese from last night's supper, and I'm going to go up and unload my phone. But what's going on in the story now, I forget where I left off, but what it's focusing on, there's kind of um, a group of young people that don't understand or they think they understand and got a gris grasp of it but they want to rebel in the sense why why can't we challenge this they can't leave the community they can leave for the day but they have to be back at a certain curfew kind of thing or they end up going crazy why not let the world know about this but there's such a secrecy about this 
little town. They've had somebody from the Vatican years ago and the army and all this, but nothing can ever stop this curse. So it's like a secret, like Bermuda Triangle, like Area 51. Nobody knows about it, about the curse and things like that. But there's a few young people that, you know, want to push, push the limits. They haven't done anything specifically. I don't know if it's going to go down that route because the last little chapter that I read is there's one woman that sympathizes with the witch and the witch, she hasn't done anything. Like she, it's almost like, Oh, I wouldn't mind a witch living in my community. And she just shows up. But I mean, she'll show up. She doesn't say anything. She whispers a little bit, but you can't really hear what she's saying, but she might stand over your bed, which would be kind of scary. You might go down in the basement and she's standing in the corner of your basement. She might be in a closet. Like, so, yeah, it's a little creepy that way, but the witch hasn't done anything yet. Um, but I'm enjoying the story. Like, it, it's not a scary story. It's a little bit of a creepy story in the sense, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want, you know, all of a sudden you walk in. But if you've grown up there or if you've lived there for years, it's just... It's almost like she's just a object that appears and disappears and doesn't do anything. And I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know whether she's going to burst awake and all heck will break loose. I don't know if these young people are going to try to push the limits and leave or blast it all over the internet that we're here or, you know, I just don't know exactly where it's going to go. So, it's interesting, and it's really piqued my interest more now than it did yesterday. Not that I was thinking of not reading this story, but I'm on just past 100. I'm going to continue with it. Right now, though, I'm going to go do some more house stuff. I might get some more reading done later on today when my husband leaves and, you know, things settle down a bit, but... Yeah, I have some stuff to do. My dad's going to be out here shortly. So, yeah, i got to get moving. So I'll be back and fill you in on my progress. Alright friends, I made it to page, uh, chapter 12, page 135. I didn't get much reading done today, like I normally would, but it is the weekend. All the kids are home and my husband was home, so I spent a lot of family time and stuff like that. But I plan on reading more tomorrow. Just wanted to check in. It's almost 11 o'clock, I think. Well, it's 10.30, but I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. Violet is right there. And I will uh, see you tomorrow. I was hoping to get to page 150, but I'm here. I'm tired. And yeah, the book will be waiting for me.
in the morning with my coffee, bright and early.
ones. Well, it is. Let me just see here. I just got done doing a teacup chat about this book. It's posted. This video will be posted in September. You're seeing this first bit of October. So anyways, I just finished doing that chat and it is, yeah, 224. The kids will be home in about 20 minutes or so. I'll show you. There's gold up at the top and down at the bottom. And there around her waist. And there's actually a ring on the inside. And she has gold here on the elbow and on the back too. And she has little flowers. It's beautiful. And this is her skirt or pedestal. Tea's dripping off. And it's Salisbury Fine Bone China, made in England. Violet, what are you doing? She's tied over there, exploring. I'm having vanilla Earl Grey tea, and it's spot on, I can tell you. But I finished Hex this morning, like just after my morning coffee. Like, I finished it by 9 o'clock. And I didn't really check in a whole lot. I don't think I checked in yesterday. I put a little clip of what I was doing yesterday. But, um, Hex, yes, I brought it out with me. Finished this book. I thought, well, while I'm out here, I might as well talk about, talk about this. So I forget where I left off and told you. I should have looked at that before I started this, but... I think it was before the Halloween festival. They, they have like a Halloween festival where they make this giant wicker witch looking lady. And just for fun, they put on, uh, people can give donations of whatever. So it'll go up in flames with the wicker witch. Um, people from outside of the community too come. That's like the big, the big thing. And the, the area for outsiders to come to take part in they don't know about the witch that lives in the town so there's a curfew on for however long outsiders can stay in the town and when that festival's over they have buses ready to ship them out but that's the big tourist attraction anyways so not everybody puts things under this wicker witch and there's a lot of animosity in the community uh, well, I should have looked what was the last thing I told you I'm trying to remember well I want to keep it simple so I don't give the whole book away but I was saying that there's a family with two teenage boys Tyler and Matt Tyler's 17 Matt is 13 Tyler has a group of friends and they are secretly rebelling against the world should know about this witch the curse that lives on this town and Tyler is a vlogger so he takes videos and things like that which you're never supposed to video the witch now he doesn't post it yet they're trying to gather evidence and things like that and anyways one of these days one of his buddies and a couple of his sidekicks go a little too far Tyler and his friend Lawrence walk in on them and they're doing stuff to this witch that should not be done to this witch and they're terrified like Tyler and Lawrence are terrified what are you doing stop doing that you can't disrespect the witch she's gonna you know rain hell down on this that sort of thing so I'll leave it at that but Tyler gets back to his house with his dog Fletcher he had his dog with him And, um, Tyler's scared. Tyler's scared. Yes, that happens just after the witch burning wicker festival at Halloween time. And, um, he's scared and he's almost got to the point where this has gotten so big, I can't handle it myself. So there's a lot of animosity, that's where I was going, <clears throat> between Tyler and his friends and what he should do and his dad. He has a close relationship with his family, but he can't divulge 
to his family what he's been doing because he knows better. He shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. And lo and behold, the wee little witch, who isn't very big at all, because back then people didn't grow as big as we do now, um, things start happening. Things start happening. Now, I didn't find this book scary. Um, it, I wouldn't even say it was a uh, full adult horror until the very end. That's when it kicked it up a notch. That's the level I like it at. Um, it was quite tame. Tame of a horror story. But I really <clears throat> didn't mind it. It wasn't the favorite, my fav a favorite book that I read. But I heard a lot of people not liking the ending of this book. Because originally it's not in English. It was a translated book. Uh, Thomas um, Old Helvet. I don't know how you say his last name. H e u v e l t, Huvelt. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sorry, Thomas, if I mispronounce that. But he's from well, he's Dutch, so it's been translated. And apparently, the original book that's in Dutch has a little bit of a different ending. I didn't mind this ending. It's kind of heartbreaking of an ending, and then it all of a sudden stops. And I think that's what maybe some people didn't like about it. I didn't mind it because I don't mind endings like that. It's just like, yeah, you want to know more. But then that's what gives you that feeling like, um, um, I'm one of the dead people that don't ever find out kind of thing. It gives me that sense of, well, that's what would happen if you never really found out. And people that maybe not aren't in the story anymore due to circumstances would never find out and I must be like one of those people <laughs> is that morbid <laughs> so long story short I enjoyed this story I didn't find it super fast paced though it wasn't like action-packed at the beginning there was a lot of stuff going on but it wasn't like anything dramatic for me um, some of the people in this town were a little crazy and some, a lot of the people in the town went a little crazier near the end. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to say too much. Um, I say that it's worth a read. I wouldn't say, I almost thought this was like a young adult, young YA. I don't know if I've ever read YA. Like, when I grew up, I don't know if that's considered YA. I read all of Fear Street and all of Christopher Pike's books. Is that why I, I don't know, but I found this very tame, except for the very end, the very end, it got more intense. And again, not the most intense I've ever read, but, um, that's where it kicked up to be a horror story because 90% of the story, there's a lot of human scary stuff going on. If the witch was around, they'd just put something around her. Because sometimes people would straggle into their town. You know what I mean? They're a working, functional town. And people can come shop there and stuff. So if she shows up in the grocery store out of the blue, they put a big mascot suit over top of her. Or if she's in the town and she shows up and there's old ladies around, they all stand around her. Or if she's standing up on a bridge, they'll throw a tarp over top of her. And I'm just like, that's more hilarious than scary to me. Kind of creepy in the sense, what is this? Does this witch know how to be a witch? Is what I was thinking, but... Or she's, she's in a curse herself. Like, well, she is in a curse herself, but... Or at least I think she is. Yeah. So, yeah, to make it total Coles notes, this town, a haunting witch, haunted witch that haunts the town, that can show up, go anywhere she wants. Her lips and eyes are sh sewed shut. She stands there like a statue, and then she poofs out of thin air to another spot. This town has cameras all over the town, all over the streets. They have, like, a million. I don't know how many they have, but... So they can, and they have an app to report when the witch shows up so everybody knows where she is. You can't touch the witch or you kill yourself. You can't, you're not supposed to interact with the witch or you'll end up killing yourself. 
you have an overwhelming compulsion to kill yourself. You can't leave the community. You can leave for a few days, apparently. But after a few days, you have a more growing, growing urge to kill yourself. Bang your head against the wall until you're past. Violet, would you get out of those flowers? Look at this woman. Look at her. Don't shake your head at me. Get your tail out of there. You're probably all tangled up now. But yes, if you leave the town for too long, you have this overwhelming urge. This little town has the highest suicide rate. Not that it's uh, nationally monitored because this town is in secret. It's like Area 51. Nobody knows about this curse except a selected few. This town is subsidized by, I think, the government, if I recall, partially to keep it quiet and to not draw attention. And that's what they do. So, but it goes, it goes sideways when, when somebody gets the bright idea of confronting the witch and doing something they were not supposed to do. So, yeah, I would recommend this book. If you're looking for a scary book, this one is not so much. Um, but it is a little creepy. It is a little creepy. Just, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> Just all of a sudden I open my closet and the witch is standing there. And she, she's not nice to look at. Or I go down in the basement for a jar of pickles. And she's standing in the corner in the stone basement like Blair Witch that would freak me out yes but the smack dab first scene of this book with this family mom and dad and two teenage boys eating Chinese food and Fletcher the dog is there and the witch is in the living room and the mom show, throws a dish towel over the witch's face and I'm just like this is hilarious but that's my take on it that's my take on it so there was a lot of hype about this book, I think. Um, I don't, some people found it very scary. I didn't really find it that scary, but I didn't mind the ending. I don't know what the original ending was. I didn't mind the crazy in the end. It was crazy in the end, but I was okay with that. Heartache, like hurtful kind of like, Oh, that's just terrible. No, no. But then I like stories like that. I like endings like that that just leave you almost in a distressed kind of way. I wasn't really distressed with that one. This one, I was a little distressed. Just saying. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog. I think I hear the school bus coming down the road, so I got to end this now. Yes, Randall. Randall Flagg is just over there. He likes to give a shout out so I hear church bell Randall and the church bell at the same time you hear that Violet oh she doesn't know what it is it's just a church bell darling anyways peace love and happiness today and every single day please like share and subscribe if you so choose but if not that's okay too I still love ya I still want all the happiness in the world for each and every one of you out there. I certainly do. I really, really honest and truly do. Yes, I do. So, oh, that's awesome. Perfect way to end it. So, yeah, check it out if you want to. If not, not a big deal. Um, if you do, let me know. Link will be down below if you do want to buy it. You can click there and buy it. If not, that's okay too. So, with that, I'll say have a good night or have a good morning. And I might... See you tomorrow. Bye. Bo bloop. <laughs>